Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here. And welcome to Sunday's edition of the DCEU Daily. The death of Superman and the story of his rebirth is one of the most proudest story of any Superman fan's kind of recollection. And this is what I'm going to say, something really controversial that a lot of you DCEU fans are not going to like. And I'm a DCEU fan, I'm obsessed with the DCEU. I love the film so far. As you all know, I'm fighting for the Snyder Cut of Justice League. And Justice League is what I want to talk about because Superman's rebirth story in the Justice League film is rubbish. It is rubbish. You know, it's all there in the comic comics. The reign of the Superman has just been done in animated format. A great, you know, Bruce Timm and his team again pull it off, which something, again, that hasn't been pulled off successfully in live action. I look at what they were doing in Justice League, and let's be honest, um, Superman's rebirth story wasn't going to be very different in the Snyder Cut. Now, obviously, he w there was ideas that he, or rumours that um, Zack's idea was that Darkseid was controlling Superman. And this is why the rest of the Justice League have to try and fight him uh, and, and bring him back to who he is, which is a lot more interesting. But ultimately, if you're going to do the death of Superman, do it properly. Make it awesome. You know, we could have, you know... The rebirth story of Superman in Justice League would have been a great excuse to finally give us an iconic Fortress of Solitude. I don't like the fact that we don't have a Fortress of Solitude in the DCEU. Yeah, I know we had the ship, but it's not the same thing. It's not, right? There's nothing more special than seeing the Fortress of Solitude rise. It is a beautiful, crystallised dome. It's a place where Superman can kind of be reminded of what his heritage is. And to be quite honest with you, that that's, you know, the scout ship doesn't do it for me. So I was never happy we didn't have a proper Fortress of Solitude. And I think if you ask any diehard Superman fans, even if they say they enjoyed Man of Steel, which I did, I adore the film, but you know, there's certain things that you must be outspoken about as a Superman fan. I think it's important and right that you're not just clouded and blinded by a love of a director or a lover or a movie, that you are able to speak freely about things you like, but also in the same turn of phrase, the things that you don't like. Um, so if we kind of go back to the subject I want to talk about and, you know, Superman's rebirth story in Justice League, it's just no good. It just doesn't work. Now, in the Justice League, it's terrible. It's awful. It's short. It's easy. Um, there's no struggle, you know, things like when Lois says to him, what was it like when you were dead? Itchy. He actually wrote that. He actually wrote that. He was trying to, you know, that's a moment where, you know, someone's asking a very deep question and Whedon turned that into a joke, which for me is absolutely despicable. But it goes beyond Whedon. It goes beyond what Terrio and Goya and even Snyder were trying to do here. Now, of course, I haven't seen I haven't seen Zack's movie. I've only seen rumours of what he was going to do. Of course, being controlled by Dark Side is awesome, and it's a better way of doing it. And I would have been excited to even see Dark Side in the Justice League movie. I don't think we were going to see very much of him. But apparently, in a planned Justice League Two movie, they were going to go to Apocalypse and fight Dark Side which would have been awesome and would have made a lot of money. We all know that. Um, so obviously there's a situation where they scrapped Zack's plans in the end, and that's part of it. But the actual idea of Superman's rebirth for me needed to be more loyal to the comics. It was bad enough that diehard Superman fans weren't happy that we had the death of Superman so early within Batman v Superman. I was okay with it. I enjoyed how they killed Superman. I thought it worked with his arc throughout BVS. It was very emotional and impactful, and I really enjoyed it. So the first part of his death was awesome. But my problem was, in Justice League, they had this opportunity to really build Superman up and, you know, give him the potential for future movies in the Snyderverse within the DCEU. And I don't know about the Snyder Cup, but I do know about the Justice League that I saw they brought him back in a lame fashion 
you've got Cyborg in the Flash digging a grave. You've got the Flash justifying why he doesn't just dig him up fast. Um, it's all very strange, isn't it? Um, and you've got this potential to tell this Superman lives story, the reign of the Superman, Superman story. And they don't do that. So even in the cinema, one of the major things that pissed me off about um, this, the theatrical version of Justice League is that the rebirth story is very short, it's easy, and it's not good enough. And it doesn't live up to what we got in the comics. Because whether you agree with them killing off Superman in BVS, once you've done it, you've got to do it properly. And do it properly, staying loyal to the comics, would have pleased a hell of a lot of people, and Justice League would have made money. But what they did was, they shortchanged the fans with the rebirth story. Now, if Snyder was going to do what he was going to do, and have um, Darkseid control him, that's a lot better, and that's a lot interesting for me. But ultimately, how they brought him back in the Justice Cut is absolutely terrible. And if that's the way he was going to come back in the Snyder Cut, then I'm sorry. It simply isn't good enough because you had a potential. Let's just, just imagine this, right? Don't have Steppenwolf in the movie, right? Forget Steppenwolf, right? So Superman is dead at the beginning of Justice League, right? And then all of a sudden, all these different versions of Superman turn up. So Ben Affleck, Batfleck has to find all these other superpowered people. So he brings them together, the Flash, Aquaman, all of them, right, to fight these different versions of Superman, right? It's awesome. And you've got Lex Luthor in the middle of this story because um, in the version of the reign of the Superman, which is the second part of the death of Superman story, Lex Luthor is very integral. Um, and I, I, what I loved about the reign of the Superman animated movie, this is where you've got Superboy as well, haven't you? So they could have introduced Superboy into it as well. So you've got this kind of reign of the Superman story. You've got Batflex, Justice League, fighting them, and ultimately the real Superman rises up in a maybe a lighter suit, maybe in a more comic book accurate suit, and everybody's happy. And we're ready to look at the future, not for just for Superman, but for the whole of the DCEU, the whole of the Justice League. That would have made a billion dollars. That may have made two billion dollars. But no, they shortchanged the audience. Why? Because Warner Brothers were in a rush to do something that they could never do. Fake didn't rush the MCU. He did five or six individual movies. Then he had a plan, right? Because when he first started doing the MCU, he wasn't under any pressure. The real pressure really for Fake was is when Disney bought out Marvel Studios. But even then, he was allowed to do what he wanted to do. Because think about it, um, a lot of Marvel fans weren't happy um, when it when kind of the universe first started up. The, the complaints about the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, 4, you know, Captain America. People weren't happy then. So the plan just continued, even though people weren't happy. But what happened with the DCEU was it was very different in terms of Warner Brothers interfering once there were so many complaints and controversies from the mainstream audience and the mainstream pundits and critics. Um, but actually, Disney and, the MC and Marvel Studios actually held their nerve. And once the Avengers Assemble happened, the rewards were there because they stuck by fake. But Warner Brothers didn't stick by Snyder, and this was the difference. Um, do I think everything would have been all right? I don't, to be honest with you. I'm a big DCEU fan. I'm a big Zack Snyder fan. But at the end of the day, Zack Snyder is a controversial filmmaker. It's as simple as that. And the mainstream audience, whether we like it or not, don't like him. We love him. They don't. That's their, that's their right. And it's our right to love him. And I know there's lots of arguments um, between the two parties, but we've got to respect each other there. Um, so I don't think it was ever going to work out in terms of this franchise being as successful as the MCU under Snyder. This is why... They had to part company, and this is why they brought in Walter Hamada, who is a figure who will kind of work with the studio rather than against the studio just to talk about the visions. Now, yes, they are going to have faith in directors to do what they want to do, but the, those directors will still have to work closely with a studio because ultimately when you're working with a studio, they're the ones funding you. They're the ones, you know, who own these characters. So you... 
unfortunately, whether you like it or not, you have to listen to them sometimes. But what happened? Warner Brothers weren't the ones who put Zack Snyder in charge of the DCEU. It was Christopher Nolan. It was Warner Brothers who put Christopher Nolan in charge and he put Zack Snyder in charge. So Warner Brothers were always uneasy about that. And this is why it didn't work out. But to wrap up what I'm talking about is, you know, Justice League could have been a great movie. You know, a billion, two billion dollar movie. If only we had a great Superman Lives, you know, rebirth story. And it's all there in the comics. We didn't need Steppenwolf. We shouldn't have even touched Darkseid. You know, if you wanted to kind of have a post credit scene of Darkseid at the end of Justice League to tease him for the future, great. But you've killed off Superman in BVS. You focus on that story. You focus on the reign of the Superman story. And you would have had something incredibly special.